Thank you. Thank you, and thank you, Simon. So this is Lego Punk, silly things to do with Lego. So what do we really mean by Lego Punk? What is it that's important, what's interesting? So first rule of Lego Punk is that anything that Lego would not be happy with, and by Lego, I mean Lego the company, not Lego the bricks. The bricks are not sentient. They can't talk or have feelings. So if the Lego company does not approve of something, I want to hear about it. If Lego company would never do it, I want someone else to do it. That's a good thing in my book. The second rule of Lego Punk is, um, well, that's it, really. Anything that annoys Lego is good by me. So, or anything that Lego wouldn't do or can't do or shouldn't do. So Lego Punk isn't this. It might have a punk aesthetic, but it's still a big lump of bricks. It's not this. It might be modern art to somebody. To me, it's a pile of bricks. To me, something as impressive would be something, well, getting closer. David Lyle used to have a, a page in the Lego Club magazine back in the early 80s. And every issue, he would build something big and impressive like this. Big and impressive Lego is good if you've done it yourself from your own money and your own funds. David Lyle was paid by the Lego company to build these models, to put into toy shops in order to sell more Lego. So as such, a little bit of a corporate shill, lovely guy, made lovely models, but not what Lego Punk is about. If Lego Punk does big stuff, then this is the sort of big stuff we want to do. Rule one, that is the Millennium Falcon. That is sitting in Docky ba Docking Bay 94. And if you want to see to scale, that's the rest of the Tatooine set they've also built. Also to the same scale. Yeah, I, I'm not quite sure how much they spent on that, but that's pretty impressive by anyone's book, I would say. These, uh, if, you, if we look at the top right, you can see the Millennium Falcon and some stormtroopers. Those are minifigs. They are this size minifigs. If I hold them into the light. That, that scene, that Docking Bay 94 scene, is all built to scale to these minifigs. That gives you a further idea on how enormous that set is. And this is something people have built with their own cash. It's not the biggest, obviously. That is. That is a life-size, genuine Lego X-Wing. They actually modeled each of the Lego bricks in a sort of a larger size, and then they built the traditional Lego X-Wing at real scale. I have no clue how, uh, you know, it's probably online. You can probably find out how much it costs, but it's a serious piece of engineering. If you just think of the weight and the transportation of that device, that's an impressive piece of work. What else? Well, the X-Wing didn't fly, but that car does drive. There were videos online of this thing trolling down the road. That's impressive. That's also pretty impressive. The Eye of Sauron. For those that like the Lord of the Rings films, you'll recognize that. That's not a still or a small model. This is it to scale. That's the guy that built it. He is a geek, as you can probably tell, because he's, he's got a funny glasses, a funny beard, and a black t-shirt, expressing individuality like all geeks do. Because, of course, I don't have funny beard or funny glasses. Oh, wait, I didn't realize where I was going with that joke. So that is life-size, but not only is it life-size. Look at the detail on the top right. It's not just a big model for the sake of being big. It is detailed. Every single nuance is there. Sizes and everything. This is built with 31 bricks, I think, roughly, and still looks pretty good. You can still express a moose head on a wall in 31 bricks. That's elegance. That's really quite impressive. Of course, you can go lower if you like. Anyone recognize what that is? <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> of course, there's always that one as well. If you have a few more bricks, depends how many bricks you've got at home. So it doesn't matter how many bricks you have. Lots and lots, or not very few at all, you can always do something that's a little bit different and interesting. Or you could build nuclear um, uh, CERN accelerator things. This is the Hadron Collider from CERN, built out of Lego. Unlike the car we saw earlier, this one is not functional. <laughs> Unless you're Sheldon Cooper, then it probably was. Also, things that Lego would not do, they would not do guns. They, or they put little toy guns and they put sort of spaceman ray guns things in their sets. They would never build assault rifles like this. Uh, for people that play computer games, you, you might recognize this from Halo. As, as I said, it doesn't fire. No one will be silly enough to do a gun that really fires. 
although of course someone has been. This actually does work. Uh, the handle turns, it hits the hammer, and it flicks bricks out. It's very unlikely that VLC is going to work on that display, so let me see if I can just... If this doesn't work first time, I'll just give up, because it's computers, and it's so silly. Nope, okay, I'll give, give up. Uh, there is a video clip that you can see where that hammer flicks out bricks. It flicks them out at about 10 bricks a second, if you can turn the handle fast enough. But being plastic bricks, they only hurt if you walk on them in bare feet. So you don't have to worry. Oh, tip, by the way, if you're a parent with a kid that loves Lego, and the kid won't clear the Lego away, just says, that's fine. We'll turn out the lights, and we'll walk barefoot into your room. If you want to do something uh, away from the bricks, break the mold. This is built by vacuum forming. So all you need is a block of wood, shape it to the uh, minifig, cover it in wax, and put it on a vacuum form machine. If you're at school or at university, you'll probably have access to one of these. If you don't, you can do smaller versions. You can obviously buy the silicone uh, trays like this. They're available in various stores and fill them with chocolate or ice. There's also a moldable plastic you can get in DIY and sort of maker stores, and Maplin, I think, sell them, where you've got little plastic beads, which when you place them into hot water or in a bag in hot water, they become malleable, which means you can imprint a minifig into the malleable uh, plastic so that when it cools, you then have your own chocolate tray. So you can either uh, make your own tray like this, or larger bricks like this, or even fill it with jelly or uh, ice water to make ice cubes. Rule number seven, design your own. If you don't want to pay Lego lots of money for a Harry Potter chess set or a Lego Star Wars chess set, design your own pieces. It's quite an interesting exercise of creative design to come up with a way of expressing king, queen, bishops, knights, and uh, rooks, and pawns with the pieces that you actually have at home. Of course, if you do have enough money, you could build this chess set. You can tell that guy is actually sort of my size. He's not a midget. He is actually sitting in a real-life chessboard. Each of those pieces has a Lego Mindstorms unit inside it. They all connect to the PC sat in front of him, which you then use to play a game of chess. The patterns on the tiles indicate which tile it is so the piece knows that it's moved to the right location. It's impressive, but I've never seen it work. I have my doubts. And you can see why I have my doubts. If you look at the size of the pieces, there's not enough room between them for the knight to get between them. That's, that's what I'm not sure on, but uh, your mileage may vary. Oh, yeah, I had this really great idea for promoting the Lego Punk site. I thought, I'll do a QR code in Lego. No one will have ever thought of doing a QR code in Lego. Two seconds in Google, this comes up. It might work. I don't know where it goes, by the way, so no one click it. It might be a dodgy site. Not that I have dodgy sites on my machine, obviously. A friend did this for me. But it might actually work. What about other signs? You could use your calendar. You could even program Lego Mindstorms to reprogram the, the Lego bricks on the calendar for you. Uh, you could also, if you do Trello, if you're a developer doing Trello stuff, you could use Lego as your Trello board. At least it gets, stops giving money to 3M for their post-it notes. There, I fixed it. I have no idea if that would actually stop a cave from falling in, but it does look like a thumbs up, so maybe it does. Mathematics. If there are any mat mathematicians in, you could probably tell me what the name of that function is. I don't remember, I didn't research it, uh, but what's interesting about this is that's a continuous function. Lego blocks are discrete, which means it actually takes a lot more effort than you think to make what appears to be a nice smooth shape from a lot of jagged Lego bricks. We'll see more on curves later. Well, 11, pictures are possible. This is one of those cases where those at the back have a better advantage than those at the front because you're the only ones who'll probably realize that the picture on the left is the same as the picture on the right. If you're in the front, take your glasses off, squint, or you know, look through your fingers. That is actually a portrait of Tori Amos in Lego. Now, of course, as anyone that does graphics know, the more pixels you have, the more bricks you have, the better resolution you have. How many more pixels do you need? Uh, about 30,000. Yep, again, the guy laying next to it is my size. That's a lot of bricks. Not only is that a lot of bricks, and boy, does he have a lot of time on his hands. If you look on the top right of the picture, 
you can see two life-size statues that he's building at the same time as this one. He has enough bricks for both of them at once. Don't you ever dare tell your kids they have too much Lego. Of course, if you don't have enough Lego, you could always make a smaller version of Elvis. That's pretty much a 2D sculpture. It's virtually a portrait. There's no real meaning in the depth of it. But if you do have enough bricks, you can build a 3D sculpture version of Elvis. Uh -huh. And if you've got even more bricks, that, that, that Elvis, by the way, is about yay high. It's not that big. But if you have, again, more bricks, make it life-size-ish. These two won a competition to have their, um, their, their bodies being cast in Lego. And all of these bricks you see here are you know, standard Lego bricks. One thing you'll, uh, you may not be aware is that these are actually hollow. Most of these big 3D sculptures are hollow. Uh, although Lego can support its own weight, it's best not to. It can be a little bit temperamental. There's normally a metal pole through the middle and other spokes to hold everything in place. And if you've been to Legoland, you'll probably notice that all the bricks are glued together and coated in varnish, just to stop little bits from cracking off here and there. But otherwise, nice build. You, even if you're not a builder and you're a photographer, there is an entire movement in the Lego uh, space which is to reimagine photographs, album covers, historic events in Lego. The Tiananmen Square uh, tanks, there is a Lego version of that. There's a Lego version of this. There's a Lego version of the guy sat on the skyscraper beam. I mean, with Lego, I can get it. I can see how that happens. But in the real version, the guy at the end, he's having his lunch break. If he needs to pee, I'd have no idea how they're going to move. I said we'd get back to curves. The curve is probably one of the more difficult things to making Lego, because we're used to Lego bricks being blocks, and we're used to curves being, well, not blocks. Uh, so if, once you can build curves, once you can build a ball, you're halfway there to be a, a professional Lego builder. If you look carefully at the dome, and the front three, four rows will probably be able to see this, the studs are pointing this way, that way, and that way throughout the course of the dome. That actually gives it a much smoother feel, and that's quite a, a, a complex thing to achieve. This is a smaller version of the same thing. Again, that ball fits in the palm of your hand, but it's still 130 Lego bricks. And they have to be exactly the right Lego bricks as well, because if they're not, you can't make it. At the bottom, there are pieces which hang underneath everything else. If they're not the right shape, there's nothing for them to hang on to, and therefore they'll fall. Yeah, as soon as someone makes a ball, you can be guaranteed someone will make a Death Star. Well, they haven't finished this one, so uh, you know, never mind. Probably the second Death Star. Insert your Star Wars jokes here. So you can bend the rules. And I say that purposely. If you look carefully at these spokes, you'll actually see that each of those spikes is, is, spokes is a curve. It's not staggered bricks. The bricks have been bent very, very slightly. And with enough bricks, a very small bend turns into the complete bend that you can see there. If you don't have so many bricks, the bends look like this. They still look like bent Lego bricks, but you can see the gaps, especially on the bottom of the yellow. But it's still viable, and it's still worth looking at. Of course, if boring curve shapes are not your thing, uh, any magicians in the audience? I, mean, I, I know we've got a couple out there. They, so yeah, why, why not just build something that's impossible, like a proper magician would? Or this one. Two studs from the front, five studs from the front, and only one cross beam. Very easy to make this. Or if you do have some time on your hands, you can make Escher's waterfall. Pay careful attention to where the waterfall ends and the path of the water going back up to the top. If you go online, you can find how this secret works. Rule 22, real world. Now, when I was growing up, I couldn't afford to take a USB stick, smash it to bits just to put it into a Lego brick. No, 20 quid a pop. Now, again, they're giving away free. So all you need to do, take a Lego brick, hollow it out with a small drill, Stick a USB stick in there, and you've got a thing. If you don't want to use USB, use LEDs. Make your own little torches. LED battery, tuppence halfpenny. Or if you want to do something bigger, an entire VR unit. And it will probably still sell better than the V. Uh, five, sorry. Of course, if you've got some aluminium, or any Americans in the audience, aluminum, you can make yourself a little key ring such as this. 
if you don't have any of that, so if you're not at a university or, or whatever, you can use that malleable plastic I mentioned earlier, and instead of using a jelly mold, uh, jelly in a mold, you could use solder in that mold. It's not very solid, it is very soft, but it, it means you can do it at home without an aluminium smelt. Rule 34, jewelry. Jewelry is something that is very easy to make, fairly cheap to make in a lot of cases, and fairly unique. I'm wearing a tie clip here. I paid a whole 99 pence for a diamond studded tie clip to be uh, shipped in from China. It must be genuine at 99p, it must be a real diamond. So I just ripped the diamond out, stuck a Lego brick over the top, and I've got a tie clip that most people don't have. Most people probably wouldn't want, but for the purpose of the talk, it serves its purpose. It's jewelry, it's easy to make. You can make a bracelet, again, just take six Lego bricks, drill a hole through the middle, and attach a piece of string or elastic around them. And there you go. If you have a little bit more time and patience, and you've got a very patient other half, you can have a wedding ring from Lego. Yeah, if your partner lets you have a wedding ring made of Lego, they're a keeper. Now, other forms are wearable. So we've got sunglasses. This is a, a set that I made myself. They are real and they are sculpted to my face, but since we're recording this and I don't want to look any more stupid than I do, I won't put them on. Take my word for it. You'll probably notice that the yellow is what you'd get in the old Lego spaceships from around the mid 80s. Spaceship, spaceship, spaceship. As is the blue. Uh, the guy on the left, uh, that picture was taken about three years ago. So now they ha probably have a beard going around to their stomach and they probably work in Shoreditch. So if you want to make stuff, you can make stuff to wear. With the LEGO Mindstorms kits, you can build a lot more of electronic and computer-oriented things, one of which is someone has built a printer. Technically, it's just a plotter, but ostensibly, a pen goes along a moving sheet of paper. The pen is controlled by LEGO motors. The paper is controlled by LEGO motors, and it draws out messages that you can create on your PC. Sticking with the LEGO Mindstorms kit, this is the NXT Mindstorms kit. This is a Segway. It's quite cool because it's a Segway. It's self-balancing and it's made from Lego. But what was more impressive is the guy that built and demonstrated this only ever tested it on a flat surface. Mathematically speaking, it should work on an incline, but he'd never tested it. And for the developers in the audience who write something, they think, yeah, it should work, but I haven't tested it. And then you test it and it works. Imagine what this guy felt like when he tested it for the first time in a room of 200 geeks and it worked first time. It's a, it's a very simple but very impressive piece of coding and building. 27, it's, this is just a projector. This is uh, an old uh, Super 8 film. Now, this is, shows the difference between an MVP in LEGO and a sort of a more finished product. Essentially, a projector is just a light bulb, uh, something to drag a piece of film through the gate, and a lens to focus the image on the screen. Well, if you pull the, th the film too tightly through the gate, it will snap. You don't want that. If you don't pull it tight enough, it will go loose and it won't thread through. The, the frame will stop. So this has a lot of extra pieces of pulleys and mechanisms to ensure that the film goes through at a good constant frame rate and doesn't stretch, doesn't break, and doesn't become too slack. Rule 28, you can do lo-fi. This is the original LEGO Mindstorms and is just basically a controlled motor. But the reality is there is no more or less technology in what is being used here than there was in the original gramophones. The gramophone had a, a motor, normally a wind-up motor, that would spin a record around and round, and there would be a needle that would, it would sit in the groove, and it would be amplified by the cone. This is all that's doing. The LEGO is there just to provide a motor and a constant speed. Robots, I was, I've got so many robots that I've built, I've got so many robots that I've seen, I've got so many robots that I've posted pictures of. There was no way I could pick any particular one or, or small number to show. So I decided on this one, which is, as you can probably guess by now, a Rubik's Cube solving robot. The reason that I like this particular one is that it's only really the left and the right hand arms that do anything. The camera takes a photograph of all the side, feeds it to the first uh, Lego Mindstorms unit on the top there on the, on the right hand side. Once it understands the cube, it tries to solve it. The blue thing just moves it backwards and forwards and around, and then the, the hands on the left and the right rotate the slices into position. This one, um, if anyone hasn't seen it before, and can guess what it does from the picture, you win a cookie. It's the antikythera mechanism. 
which uh, was a 2,000-year-old calendar computing device. Uh, when it was discovered in the sea, it looked like this. Archaeologists, computer geeks, and random hangers-on worked out that this was the mechanism. And even though it's 2,000 years old, it would compute the position of the sun in the sky at any given time of day. It would compute the position of the moon, phases of the moon, eclipse, and, and various positions of things in the sky. For 2,000 years old, and looking like that, that's not a bad feat. And that's what it looks like in Lego. Rule 31, Arduino. You can stick an Arduino into anything. Uh, this is an instrument. I, I did have an audio clip, which we won't be able to play. But with a piece of resistance wire stretched across a meter or so of Lego, you have a crocodile clip that creates a potential divider circuit in the resistance wire. This is fed into the Arduino. It converts this potential difference into a note, and it plays a beepy noise. But of course, that's an Arduino making the noise. This doesn't make a noise at all. Uh, as you can tell, it's a guitar, but the tension on the strings, if you were to really put strings on there, the amount of tension in guitar strings is such that it would cause that ne Lego neck to break. Even if you were to put a piece of metal all the way through that neck, the bricks would break around the metal, and you still wouldn't be able to play the guitar. If you use nylon strings, however, you could make a violin. This is playable. It even has tuning pegs, if you look to the bottom right, which do tune the violin. It's not very tuneful, but it does work. The main problem with instruments like this is because they are so small, and LEGO is quite fragile, it means that you can't play real instruments that, that require a vibration because the vibration of the string has too much tension, it would break. So what you need to do is instead of having a small unit, you need to have a large unit. This is a life-size harpsichord. This really does play. Uh, it doesn't sound very good. Um, we do have, let me see if I can play this though. This might actually, because it's only audio. awful, but it's also good considering everything except for those strings are Lego. Um, where were we up to? We're up to rule 33. Okay, so rule 34 is next. Um, actually, can I switch to the other screen? I, it's actually something I do want to try on the other screen. Is I, I'm, I seem to have lost a thing. I want to get that onto the main screen. Is that coming up? Can we switch the thingy? Okay. Let me see if I've got... Whoops. Uh, oh, let me see if I switch into this. Hello, computer. If not, we'll give it, because this, I've shown everything hardware-based, things that you can build with Lego when you're uh, either building molds. So let me see if I can find settings. Ah, lost it. Um, but as Stephen, mentioned, there are a variety of licensing structures um, that are available, uh, no, go away. and we'll talk about some of those in, in a bit more detail. There we go. This is Lego GTA. <laughs> okay, stop. It's hammer time. Now, now, we will change the rules. The Defender is now the target. And even translucent. Okay, Defender is now the target. And not a web you are the Defender. To do Move this, so that you keep yourself between the attacker and the target. In that world. Okay, the defender is now the target. You are the defender. Move so that you keep yourself between the attacker and the target. Go. But otherwise, it's something else, you know, you can build this stuff with Lego and a little bit. Okay. One more slide on rule 34. Although before we do, actually, I should probably point out this other thing. Everyone's got these massive Millennium Falcons. I've got this little tiny one. Lego don't like you selling instructions. So there's a guy in the States that gives instructions for free, but then sells the bricks. Because Lego can't stop in selling the bricks, but they can stop in selling instructions. 
So if you, if you need a way around things, there's always a round. So finally, we're up to rule 34. Does everyone know what rule 34 is? No, I don't know at all. I've never heard of that. No, I'm a good little boy or girl, yes. Yeah, well, sorry, as I've just been told, we're out of time. So I can't show you what Rule 34 in Lego looks like, uh, but I can say thank you to the little minifigs that did make this possible. That's the organizers and everyone here working at the backstage behind the big lights. Um, I've probably got a couple of minutes for questions if there are any, but otherwise, thank you all. Would anyone like to ask a quick question? Do we have any questions in the audience? Just quickly, just quickly, just quickly. Or shall we turn around? Yeah, I have one over here. Here we are. Can you please put the glasses on? We have a request to put the glasses on. The glasses. Put the glasses on. Put the glasses. Thank you. Now, I have to do that very gently because these glasses are real. They do have real lenses in, and they don't have real lenses in. Uh, so I'm very, very close to walking off the edge of the stage. And there's actually an amusing little thing. I, when I first made them, I took them on to a London 2600 meeting. We're just meeting up, drinks, talking rubbish, as, as you normally do. And we ended up going through Leicester Square. And I was wearing these things because at the time I didn't think I had a reputation to protect. So I'm there looking like an absolute doofus. And a couple of tourists come over and saying, oh, they're Lego, what, what's this? So being the people that we were, instead of just saying, oh, we're just some friends out, we're you know, just popping out for some beers and burgers, I said, oh no, this is Mr. Lego, he's from Denmark, he's doing a tour of London at the moment. <laughs> so over the next hour, I'd got my picture taken by about a thousand tourists in Leicester Square, all thinking they'd met Mr. Lego. Luckily, this was, this was in the days before Facebook, otherwise there'd probably be pictures on there and I'd be tagged up or something. Uh, but it's, it's surprising how simple a little thing just sets you apart and um, encourages weird strangers in Leicester Square to come up to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen. I think having had the glasses, we, we can't top that. Thank you very much indeed. Stephen Goodwin. Thank you.